My name is Zina Abiyasi, and I'm the manager of interactive programs at Tribeca Film Institute. At the Institute, we support underrepresented voices in, from the world of m film and uh, new media, and um, we have three departments. One is uh, artist programs, which focuses on linear films, and so traditional film docs and scripted. Uh, the other department is education, and we work in high schools and um, prisons, and we have a connected model that links both communities to co-create together and uh, um, to co-create films together. And finally, the interactive department, which is the youngest department, started in 2011, um, and it focused and we we initiated it as a response to the shifting media landscape, and we wanted to create a sort of 360-degree uh, journey for the project. And so we have um, four programs um, with different uh, subcategories, I guess. Um, uh, initially, we started with the, with the funds. Uh, we have the New Media Fund, which is a, a production fund. It's meant for projects that are in the making. It's between 50K and 100K. Um, and um, it focuses on nonfiction. Um, loosely on nonfiction. We say nonfiction, but it's cross-genre in many cases. And um, it's, uh, it focuses on social justice issues. Um, the other fund is a prototype fund, which is a form of a seed fund. It's uh, for projects that are in ideation phase, for um, teams to um, get started on the project, ideate, um, iterate, uh, and prototype so that they can then go with that prototype and get more funding. Um, that's a smaller fund that's between 10K and 20K. Um, and then we have an incubation program which uh, has hackathons and labs. And we are also, uh, to mention, our funds are international, so we fund um, creators from all over. Um, hacks, uh, the hacks and labs are also somewhat international, um, and they are meant for people who want to enter the space and don't really know how to. It's sort of a channel in. Um, they, in a short period of time, create prototypes with, uh, with each other, and they come from different backgrounds, like film and technology and journalism and activism. And so they kind of um, sit together uh, and create a prototype <laughs> over a short period of time. And that way, they learn uh, their different languages and the different ways every industry works. Um, we have. Um, Sandbox and Immerse, which are somewhat forms of uh, resources for the landscape. Sandbox is um, uh, significantly uh, uh, not up to date, uh, but we are working on updating that platform, and it's a bit of a, an online bank of sorts of information, um, how to create a new media project, how to create a team for that, to how to budget, and sort of um, field notes from um, experts and practitioners who um, share their insight on their creations. Uh, Immerse is um, a collaboration with MIT Doc Lab and the Fledgling Fund, and it's an online uh, platform on Medium that focuses on nonfiction storytelling, and it's sort of a conversation platform where people write pieces and um, sort of open up dialogue about the platform, emerging uh, forms of it, and um, you know the ethics of it, what works, what doesn't, gender gaps and equality gaps, stuff like that. And then finally, we have the um, showcase at the Tribeca Film Festival, and we have three different um, uh, exhibition opportunities within the festival. We have the VRcade, which started um, only two years ago, and as the name suggests, this focuses on VR. Um, the second one is um, Storyscapes, which uh, focuses on more um, story-based, large-scale exhibitions, uh, immersive exhibitions. Um, so that can be wearable tech, uh, uh, installations, and VR in many cases as well. And then finally, the interactive day, which is split between a playground and a conference. The conference is meant to have people in the field just sharing their, ex their expertise and their experiences in the space, and the playground is uh, a really, um, it levels the playing field because it, uh, we showcase emerging talent alongside um, experts and we don't focus necessarily on story, we focus on the possibilities of technology that's out there and it's meant for people to come into the room and get inspired and get ideas uh, based on this technology and think about how they can use it in telling their own stories. 
I'm going to end here and pass the microphone. <laughs> um, and we can get. Back. Hello everybody, my name is Danek Blaha. I work for uh, Institute Documentary Film. Let's see if there's a slide. I work for Institute of Documentary Film, uh, where I am responsible for uh, completed documentaries. Uh, I run the East River Market, uh, which is uh, uh, distribution platform for documentaries, uh, how to reach the festivals, uh, how to reach the sales agent, and so on. But I'm also in charge of uh, East Doc Interactive, which is our interactive uh, program for uh, transmedia documentaries and, and other various other projects. So, Institute Documentary Film works for already for 16 years, and we support creative documentary films from Central and Eastern Europe. That's our focus, that's the area we are uh, looking forward to projects and uh, directors and producers and so on. Uh, we run various uh, events uh, for filmmakers. Uh, basically, we cover all uh, the whole process from development to production, post-production to distribution. And uh, we are able to provide with uh, uh, training uh, programs, with uh, financing, because we also have a, a award for best projects I will be talking about later about network we have events for networking uh, we have distribution programs for example we have uh, we're running for the four years now project called Kinedoc which is uh, alternative distribution of documentary films we run it in seven countries including Poland uh, together with Krakow Film Foundation maybe you, you saw some uh, screenings around you because uh, the project is focused on screening of the documentaries not only in cinemas but on uh, various alternative places either galleries clubs uh, places which has some community around it uh, then we provide pitching opportunities and uh, also information because uh, docwebnet is our main uh, platform main, main website where is also a large database of uh, upcoming films completed films also deadlines for festivals uh, workshops and so on but what we do is, the main event is the ESOC platform. It takes place every year in March in uh, uh, Prague during the One World Film Festival. And uh, this is a networking platform uh, uh, which is uh, tailor-made for Central and Eastern European documentary filmmakers. And uh, it's uh, focused on co-production, funding, and distribution. Part of it is EastDoc Forum, formerly known as East European Forum, which is a pitching forum for linear documentaries. Uh, usually 21 projects are presented to decision makers from all over the world. Another part of it is EastDoc Interactive, which was, uh, I will be talking later about it a little bit, but it was formerly known as DocTank. It was a workshop for, the, for uh, transmedia uh, and interactive documentaries, but now we are changing it to, to a pitch. Uh, we also have an EastDoc market, which is a uh, pre-scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings. It's good if you are looking for co-producers or sales agents. You, you go there with the project, meet the people, and uh, continue some negotiation. And uh, this year, for the first time, or oh, the next year, the next edition of March, we also started cooperating with Tribeca Film Institute, and we will be running, if then, short pitch for short documentaries. So, EastDoc Interactive. It's a... Uh, uh, the aim is to uh, provide collaboration between the storytellers, potential partners, and uh, this year, uh, as I said, formal, it was uh, for the last four years, it was a workshop similar to uh, IFLAP or IDV Interactive uh, Documentary Workshop in NEON, which we also cooperate with. And uh, we are changing it from a workshop, which was focused on uh, analyzing of the, of the project, uh, going through different aspects of the project from uh, user design to uh, user experience, uh, user interface design, and so on, uh, to uh, work on a story and narrative and so on. And this year we will be running an uh, interactive pitch. There will be a roundtable pitch for up to five projects. Uh, although we are uh, focused on Central and Eastern Europe, this is more open. We will be accepting also uh, projects from uh, other countries. And the idea is to provide you during a, a short workshop to uh, Go through the project with the specialists, with the tutors, uh, and prepare your uh, project for the final pitch, which will be presented to decision makers and uh, in private investors and so on. So, uh, yeah, that's what I mentioned. You will also get the whole package of the, uh, which is part of the ESOC platform. You will have one-on-one -on -one meetings, you will be present at the pitch, and you will have uh, 
broad uh, options for networking because as I said this is the platform for uh, linear documentaries there will be lots of people from uh, other areas so it's a good place to to meet also uh, let's say uh, people from uh, the traditional uh, uh, background like from television and so on uh, as I said, we are open to all kinds of interactive projects. We are looking for innovative approach to the story and uh, to cross-media projects, developing new storytelling ways, linear documentaries with internet apart, uh, web docs uh, and multimedia and virtual reality projects as well. And it could be at any stage of development, production or post-production. Actually, development, we're not so much looking for development. There's a little bit mistake there. We are looking for projects that are quite advanced, uh, more on the production, post-production si uh, side because of the pitch. And I'm running out of time, so... Uh, the most important things are when, March, uh, where Prague, Czech Republic, and deadline for application is November 10. We just opened it uh, last week. Thank you. Thank you, Zanak. Hello, I'm Jadwiga Hariska from Gdańsk, and uh, I am leading a gallery uh, uh, called Atnes, uh, Center for Contemporary uh, of Art. Um, and uh, Art and Science is, is part of our program. Uh, I shortly present our institution. Uh, we have uh, uh, two buildings. Uh, looks very similar. Oh, sorry. And uh, this first one, which I show you, was, we, we start in uh, work in that uh, almost 20 years ago. Next year we will celebrate the 20th anniversary. That one we got in 2008 and uh, start with our activity in 2013. And uh, in this space we had now also residency space. And what for us is art and science? With this project we started in 2011 when Gdańsk wanted to take uh, um, Capital of Culture title, and this pr but Gdańsk didn't want, but we, when we start with this project we continue it to this day. We had uh, s several really good names. In 2011 we present uh, as the first project Monika Fleischmann and Strauss uh, as well as uh, uh, exhibition prepared uh, by Ludwig Museum, where, where we present Kepes and uh, Malina, and Victoria Vesna present in the local church uh, the performance Blue Morph. In 2012, we present uh, Crude Life, Jonat Sur and Oron Katz. What is important, uh, artists said that we as first uh, documented the activity from the beginning in the books. This book, which you can see on the uh, tape here, it's the uh, publication which we prepared every, by every exhibition. And it's, uh, it was 2014, shortly, 2015. And here you see that uh, it's the first time a, a group exhibition curated by Yasha Reihardt. Uh, because mainly uh, exhibition are curated by Richard Kuszczynski, I suppose, who uh, from here know him well. Uh, he's a professor from university and f from Łódź. And uh, last year uh, we organized again group exhibition curated by Russian curator art and artist Dmitry Buatov. And this year we had Masaki Fujihata and uh, uh, interesting panel with James Jimzewski, uh, Loari Micha, and Vitor Libionka, people who discuss about uh, artificial brain. Just now, on Friday, we open a little bit different kind of ex exhibition in balance in cooperation with S Spanish Museum. It's uh, more uh, closer of uh, ecology aspect. And we have also some plans. Uh, as you can uh, read, maybe I will not list it. i tell you only how we organize it. Uh, we are uh, looking for uh, artists by our uh, exchange information, and some of them uh, is invited by Richard Kuszczynski. Uh, if we uh, decide to cooperate with someone, uh, we together looking for possibility for supporting. 
uh, and of course sometimes we, uh, we uh, also invest in production one artwork for us and this what is very important to everyone is uh, this book uh, uh, maybe I show this because uh, after our age uh, exhibition we, uh, or event like uh, conference uh, for us it's very important to publish the book which is not a classic catalog only book which is described uh, activity artists in artists or artists in context uh, kind uh, narrow uh, 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 of art and uh, if someone would like to get uh, something uh, of this book, you can find at uh, Wajnia website, uh, you can find information. And of course, for, for scientists, if someone write to me, I can send PDFs. And of course, uh, uh, if you would like to uh, 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 talk about any project, we're always planning any for minimum three years uh, future uh, meetings and discuss about possibilities as well as all from all lectures, no, maybe not from all, but mainly all. Uh, you can find also uh, video documentation on our website. Uh, it's called Lajnia Life, and you can find it, uh, uh, these videos. It's, some of them are really unique. Thank you. Is it me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, there we go. Um, hi, I am finding the clicker. Um, I am Ruthie Doyle from the Sundance Institute. I am the New Frontier Lab Programs Manager, but I'll talk a little bit about all of the New Frontier programs at Sundance. Um, New Frontier is a dynamic initiative at the Sundance Institute, which supports artists who are innovating on the art and form of story. Um, so that ha takes a wide variety of platforms. Um, I, I noticed some uh, familiar faces from yesterday, um, so you might recognize some of these slides, and I'll give you um, maybe a different version, but I threw in a fun video so that we had something a little bit different. use bad language so um, but you get the idea I, I love this piece he's both a lab and festival um, uh, alumni of ours and kind of represents all these other cheeky ways of, of engaging with different kinds of formats and that's an old piece quote-unquote like we discussed yesterday what old means um, so you probably know about data moshing a long time ago at this point with Kanye West um, I'll talk first a little bit about the festival because unlike um, the labs at Sundance um, uh, which were the original, um, the original programs of Sundance. So the festival actually came out of the labs that were taking place in Utah at a defunct uh, resort in the mountains of Utah. They bought um, an ailing um, film festival called the American Film Festival at that time, and that became a place to show the work coming out of the labs. On the other hand, New Frontier at the festival became a way to provide a provocation into the festival, starting when um, Google became the second, I mean, uh, YouTube became the second search engine after Google. This was before they were the same thing. This was in 2005, which was, we, we still didn't know quite what, what YouTube and Google would become, but what our chief curator, who's still the chief curator today, started thinking, what does that mean for artists who are making uh, moving image that that's people are searching for information in moving image and of course you know it's become something specific today but at the time it really captured our imagination so it became a way to provide provocations into the festival space um, specifically um, and then in 20 and that we just passed our 13th year so then in 2011 um, we decided to deepen that commitment to the new frontier space the artists who are innovating the art and form of story with a lab so just like the model of the screenwriting lab or the director's labs um, that people might know a little bit about um, if they know more than the festival um, we now have a lab that's focused specifically on story 
Um, I'm skipping ahead. Um, specifically on story. So that's for projects that are in development. Um, they can't be too early on that it's um, you know, just a wisp of an idea. It can't just be very conceptual, but it can't be so far along that they just need a polish. They're ready for some final um, post-production financing. And um, we bring six projects to the mountain, um, three doc, three narrative. Um, sometimes it's kind of fuzzy, which are which, as <laughs> we heard earlier. Um, and we build out a cohort of a cre creative advisors around those six projects. Um, so that means that we will always have story experts. So we have screenwriters, Academy Award winning doc writers, and Golden Globe winning showrunners for television, along with scientists who are working on bio art and um, game makers and game developers. And it really just depends on what the projects themselves are that we build out around those cohort of people. Um, we don't have um, a, a specific pool of funding that, that you can apply to, but there is occasionally subgranting that um, opportunities that arise out of the pool of submissions that we receive for the New Frontier Story Lab. So even though we only are able to select six projects for the Story Lab itself, I would strongly encourage you to apply. Sometimes people kind of get discouraged because it seems like, oh well, Sundance is kind of elitist. And it's not that it's elitist, it's just that we get so many responses that we can only take so many with only six slots. So we take about 1%. But we continue to think about those projects throughout the year that were those projects that really captured our imagination and other opportunities that arise. I'm talking very fast. Um, including our residency programs and including those kinds of granting programs um, that I just described. Um, the application is open now. Unfortunately, I don't have a slide with the um, with the uh, website, but it's applications.sundance.org, and that closes on October 17th. Um, and I'll say it one more time, it's applications.sundance.org, and the Story Lab applications are open now. This is the key. Gonna, <coughs> gonna stand up, because all those people there, you know, I, I don't even see you guys, so I feel a bit. You're excluded. So um, today I'm here with uh, another hat than the one I had yesterday um, as a head of studies of uh, IFLAB, which stands for Interactive Factual Lab. This is an adventure that started uh, four years ago because I kept having people coming to me with great ideas and saying, oh, I have this great concept. I'm not too sure who to do it with. I'm not too sure which platform I should use. I don't have a technical um, help there, but can you help me? And it ended up, I started thinking, well, maybe really the gap at the moment is this, that people have ideas but actually don't have the structure to help them to put them to, you know, at least to a prototype level. So we created IFLAB, which is uh, a workshop, effectively, that brings people from their concept, so a story concept, to a first digital prototype. And it works in two weeks, it's twice five days and uh, it's supported by a media program from uh, um, you know, the Commission and therefore it moves a little bit around in Europe every year we do it in different places. But fundamentally the concept behind it, oops, if there is a concept here coming up, yeah. The concept behind it is that uh, I think that the real problem is we have three worlds coming together when we do interactive stories. We have a, a digital world that comes where people are used to agile methodologies. We have an interactive world that has been doing user-centered design and design thinking for years. And then we have the storytellers, which are still very much attached to the plot and, you know, arc, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what is very difficult is to put all those people together and create a methodology that is pretty much in the middle and takes the best of each of those parts and creates something that is viable. And so this is what IFLAB attempts to do. We always have at least three mentors, which are there all the time. One person on the storytelling side, one person on the UX, and one person more on the coding side. And together, we bring people along through a journey. And this journey has been about trying to establish a methodology of work. For as much as I hate methodologies, I think they're actually very useful when you're at the beginning. And this is a bit the idea. It's a design methodology, which is based on you come with a, a concept, you then start interacting with your audience, understanding the needs of your audience. You try to formulate what is it the real task that you want this thing to do. You know, what do you want to achieve? And then you go into an ideation process 
um, which eventually you test and you start again. And as part of the job during those four years, we were quite lucky because we, we basically took it as our own sandpit and we developed throughout the four years um, a series of canvases, a series of cards that can help people to really write down, okay, what's my concept, what is my impact, what is, so, you know, I don't have the time to go through all of them, but just to give you an idea, we, you know, we distribute concept and then we work around with you. Um, how does it work? Uh, twice uh, five days, uh, normally first week of May and last week, uh, first week of uh, July. Um, the cities depend. This year is going to be Belgium and France. There are some lectures, but very few actually, but it's very much hands-on. It's about working together. There's a lot of group brainstorming, a lot of post-its, a lot of other people working on your project, trying to um, give you ideas. Um, there is obviously one-to-one -one mentoring, uh, so the day is divided that sometimes you're all together, sometimes um, you have a one-to-one. -one. Um, this is uh, Mike Robbins from Helios Design Lab. Um, you know, we're super happy and really lucky to have him on board. He's with us every year and I think he's an incredible asset in the team. Um, we really try to do paper prototyping at the beginning, so that's the end of the first uh, week, which is called Design... Um, story booster and then when we see you again two weeks later we actually go into a digital prototyping exercises which effectively it's a mini hack where you're trying to build something um, we try to experiment but more than anything we really try to have fun together this is a, a quadrilla dance that we did this year to start our hackathon because people didn't know each other so we ended up having people walking hands in hands and presenting themselves while they were dancing a quadrilla so I thought that was very much summarizing the type of atmosphere that we want to have in the lab. You can go on our website. Uh, we haven't opened already uh, for subscription, but you can find all the information and email us. And last thing, we're lucky enough by chance to have an if labber in the room, uh, Beata. So if you want to ask to someone what it does it feel like to go through the experience, I'm sure she'd be very happy to answer. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Clio Krajewska. I'm from the Wro Art Center and the Wro Media Art Biennale here in Poland, in Wrocław, which is not Warsaw. Um, and um, as I think, to, to speak about the Wro Biennale in three to five minutes, uh, it's really interesting concept. So instead of running and rushing through this time, I will just say the most important thing on the beginning and then we will see. So um, the word Wro uh, appeared, we heard this word many times uh, since the beginning of this con uh, conference. Uh, the first time uh, when Wro was mentioned, it was during the very inaugural speech of uh, Mr. Krzysztof Olenski uh, yesterday morning. Uh, and he described Wro as the um, epicenter or fundaments of digital culture and media art in Poland. So, indeed, we can describe Wro in uh, this very uh, historical characteristics. It started in uh, 89, so next year we will be having, I don't know when to, okay, where, okay. So next year, we will, ne next edition of the Vrobian Nale 2019 will be the 30th anniversary, so the Jubilee edition. So, um, uh, it was also, it was the first, the biggest, the most international 
a forum for a new kinds of art uh, that appeared at, at the time. So all weird stuff that couldn't be shown in the classic music festivals or um, ex contemporary art exhibitions or uh, things like that, where we be, where we're showing, where yeah, showing at Vro uh, Biennale. So at the time it was video art, computer graphics, installation, and of course, it very much evolved since uh, that time. So here we can see some pictures from the very first editions of the, of the Biennale. So we have the impression that it's really a prehistorical pre times. So um, uh, we, uh, of course, uh, uh, we, so we can be defined in this term that are very, you know, uh, uh, historical, but also it shows the importance of the VRO in the Polish, but also international scene. But also we can be defined in a terms of very contemporary terms. So we are constantly uh, renewing, constantly evolving, constantly searching for new forms of expression, for uh, new narratives, also new places. Every uh, edition of the Biennale it happens in 10 to maybe 18, something like this, places, different places, which can be also a new um, place like, for example, in this case, uh, um, a department store. So, um, in this context, I think uh, it's very important to say that um, the curatorial choices of RAW are based on the criteria that are art, not technology. So, we are media art festival, but the most important thing for us is uh, not the technology for the sake of technology, but um, the aesthetic experience, uh, as much understood in a classical way, but also in a way revisited by the constantly t changing technology. Um, so, um, yeah, the works are, are chosen, uh, you know, if they have the artistic, aesthetic, critical value, yeah? Um, and uh, I think the example of such an uh, exhibition is the exhibition that is currently here in, Wrot in uh, Warsaw. Uh, it's, it's visible today, tomorrow, and uh, till uh, the 4th of October in uh, Dom Słowa Polskiego, which is a former printing house. Um, some, this is, uh, these are some uh, pictures from the, from the exhibition and uh, you, this morning we had a very nice uh, guided tour uh, for the participants of the conference. Uh, the g g g art guides are present there uh, all the time. Tomorrow there will be another guided tour at 7 p.m. So those of, uh, of, of you who ha haven't had the occasion yet to visit the exhibition are strongly welcome. Um, and um, this is my last slide, so I think it's okay. I, I, can, I can go on, right? So, uh, because this panel is addressing people uh, who are uh, creators or activists in interact interactive art, so how you can get in. So, uh, during the every edition of the Biennale, just before, we are having a call for works, because works chosen are not only our curatorial choices, but also they are, uh, that there is an open call, so uh, everybody is welcome to submit um, a work. Uh, we also have, uh, we also work with um, art uh, schools, and we are showing the best media art graduation projects. Um, um, with the uh, other works at the Biennale, so the students' works are shown with the classics. So I think it's um, nice for the students. And um, also we are starting now a new European project. Uh, uh, so it's called European Media Art Platform. And stay tuned because like, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but October, November, we will be having a call for proposals. Um, like more than 10 institutions are involved. Uh, FACT UK, uh, Werkleitz Germany, Ars Electronica uh, Austria. So we will be producing 44 new works works all together. So stay tuned because this call for proposals might be for you. And there will be also workshop, residences, international presentation and so on. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. And Hi. Um, thank you first for the invitation and to sit in this round. It's uh, really amazing because some of the festivals I know, but uh, not all of them, and it's great what you produce. It's very important uh, in our times that we actually do something what is uh, more on the side of content, not on the product side, and that we really push this forward and talking about culture in the, our digital age. So I'm Thorsten S. Wiedemann, founder and artistic director of Amaze. Um, so if you want to contact me, make a picture now. Um, this is the other contact. And yeah, the Amaze world um, has this four pages. <laughs> and um, we also do festivals um, all around the world. So basically in Berlin in April. And um, in, I just came back from South Africa, from Johannesburg what was a festival uh, about independent games and alternative games and with, uh, weird virtual reality. Uh, I do the festival since six years now and it's growing. It's very nice to see when you go somewhere in a different country and build everything from scratch that you actually can have an impact in the community. And this is something what is actually my approach by doing this and also my challenge to go to different countries and build something up what was not existing or building bridges between Africa and Europe and bring um, people, artists um, to festivals and uh, also make them visible. So also we have a magazine. Um, I just skip a little bit through the pictures. So before, because I got uh, very nice uh, questions from Martin, and uh, um, I just want to read them. So the answers. Um, <laughs> um, what is the institution doing? So um, I said, um, I'm Thorsten S. Wiedemann, founder and artistic director of Amaze, and uh, we are creating space for independent alternative game creators who are working experimental and filling the medium with artistic and reflected content. We foster with our festivals and pop up events around the world communities, authorship in games, we are in playful media, and trying to generate. Um, a kind of a new market because it's important that people also make um, a living out of it and it's going to be sustainable and uh, um, this is actually our work what we should do to, to make them uh, um, living with what they do and what they love to do and uh, um, yeah have their passion well done um, and um, the next question was um, what sets you apart um, so I have to rush a little bit. Um, uh, we are not only a game conference and not a game convention. We are a festival um, where, we, where you meet professionals and visitors and uh, amazes a full experience. So we have music, we have exhibitions, talks and workshops. And we also have a lot of space in between. So it's not that uh, there's always just a format and then we go for that. When, if somebody comes, we have tech there. People can just build their stuff and uh, be there. You know, I mean, this is the most important thing that people are coming. And uh, for me as well, working as much as, as into the scenario as possible and um, bring together creators and enthusiasts from any kind of background who wants to meet game developers and um, find a way maybe to collaborate in the future. And um, I think this is unique, especially in the game world, um, because most of the game um, events are more focused on the product, but not on the people. Um, what can I? Uh, what can it do for an interactive project? Uh, for example, help in developing project, in finding financing, help in pr uh, distribution, and all and so on. So we are a professional event, and we have every year, especially in Berlin, we have thousands of artists and game developers um, there, and uh, we have a very mixed audience, and uh, we have a lot of press coming. So we have kind of 200 press people from all over the world coming and checking out all these games, and it's kind of unique experience for the press people as well to have all this stuff in one place so we have kind of 100 to 150 exhibits there and it comes from installations we are stuff and uh, uh, and games so um, and this is a great opportunity as well to win an Amaze Award. We have six categories and uh, um, some of the games after they're winning the Amaze Award it's also going to be a financial success for them so even when it's a niche content um, oh yeah, so I miss a lot.
So what kind of projects I'm interested in? Um, I'm personally very interested in mind-bending works. Beautiful is not enough for me, and it is. it has to be edgy and deep, and um, has also to challenge me, not on a sportive level, but on an on a intellectual level. And um, what kind of people can submit and how are the requirements? I mean, it's uh, you just have to go on the websites and then you see what uh, actually um, we are always submitting. And um, we are open for anything and you just have to contact us and we play everything what you send us and we give as well feedback. So you're always very welcome to be part of the Maze Festival. Hello. Let's just see if this is uh oh too quick. Uh, and I have to be quick because there's no way I'm going to finish it, this into five minutes. So my name is Dan Tucker. I'm the curator of um, the interactive and immersive side of Sheffield Doc Fest. Uh, Sheffield Doc Fest, 25 years old next year, is uh, a documentary film festival, but actually, really, it's a non-fiction festival. So um, we accept non-fiction stories across all platforms, whether it be linear or digital. Um, we are open to all. It's, it, we are a not-for-profit funded by the Arts Council, which means that the public attends. That means if any of you want to come over in June, you can just rock up and, and have a go. Um, and we're a great place to discuss, share ideas, meet people, and, and develop new projects. Um, and from a practical point of view, in terms of you know, what are we, how can we help you, um, we are a good place to find funding, find support, and meet distributors and platforms. So I'm going to have to rush because there's loads on there. Uh, I run the Alternate Realities program, and that is primarily an exhibition and a summit. Uh, but we also have a market. We uh, commission a piece of work every year. We also have awards. Um, we commission uh, or enable immersive events for the festival. And more recently, we've been touring our work as well. So I'm going to try and rattle through this. So um, the exhibition, so we exhibit uh, interactive and immersive stories, non-fiction stories, as art in a gallery space, as artworks. Um, very different to the rest of the kind of tech world. There's no conference, there's no booth. You, the artists, come and work with us to create the installation. We bring artists over and we even pay a small fee because we recognize you as artists. This year we had uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, games. We had projections in a dome. Uh, and art installations. We tend to divide uh, the exhibition between interactive and virtual reality. Interactive is kind of catch-all for everything else, and you know what virtual reality is. Um, and we get about 39,000 people come to the festival every year. Um, diversity is really important to us, um, and we're really pleased that we get a, a pretty good balance of female and male makers. And we represented 13 countries this year, and we want that to get better and better. The summit is a day dedicated to the art and craft of making interactive stories, some demonstrations as well, but panels and talks like this. Um, and that's a great place to talk about your project in front of an incredible audience. Uh, the kind of most practical thing for a lot of people, I think, is like how to get funding. And we have a really, really targeted market. So we have uh, usually around 350 um, submissions, and we boil that down to just 25. So we just take 25 projects through to about 450 meetings. And the value um, of the markets across the entire festival, including film, is about 10 million pounds. We also have a commission. Uh, this year, we co-commissioned with FACT. FACT were mentioned earlier, I think, by Clio, a really um, great arts venue in Liverpool in the UK. Um, uh, and it's not a huge amount of money, but it's, it's enough to create the first iteration of a project. Um, this year we worked with an amazing company called Marshmallow Laser Feast and Alex Pearson to create something called Future Aleppo, which is a really beautiful story. I don't have time to tell you, <laughs> but um, it's an amazing VR piece and uh, a physical exhibition as well. We have awards. We have a, a VR award, an interactive award, and an audience award. And um, we feature multimedia or interactive events. This year we featured uh, Doom Room from the incredible uh, experience makers Macropole, uh, which is a kind of psychosexual death fantasy which takes you into virtual reality and then back into reality in a very surprising way, as you can imagine. And Eight Minutes, a contemporary dance piece um, based around the science of the sun. 
And uh, finally, the exhibition, uh, we, I choose 26 pieces. I'm like the digital shopper. Everywhere I go, I'm looking for people to collaborate with and, and finding projects. And then this year, the British Council in the UK um, have funded us to take 10 of those projects on tour. And I think the same thing will happen next year. So right now, my team is in Brazil. These are some pictures from Uruguay. We took nine pieces to Uruguay. Brazil's next, and then after that, Argentina. How am I doing for time? I'm really rattling through. Oh, good, I'm on the last slide. There we go. 20 seconds to spare. So uh, please do get involved. Come and talk to me about the festival. I've tried to keep this as, as, as brief and practical as possible. Um, the other practical things you need to know are that for the um, exhibition, we open for submissions on the 10th of October. And we go through them all. And like uh, Torsten was saying, we will give feedback. Uh, the market application submissions will be open from the 1st of November. And the commission, um, we have submissions uh, in February. So you've got lots of time to talk to me before about what are we interested in commissioning because I don't have time to talk about it. Now, one second to go. Thank you. Uh, I add something. Uh, the future Europa project will be presented uh, in Warsaw, uh, 7th of uh, this December this year, during the Digital Stories Lab, which is a part of uh, Watch Dogs uh, Festival. Okay. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I removed my computer. <coughs> okay. Uh, my name is Elvira Wojtunik. I'm a founder and the artistic director of the Digital Art Festival Patch Lab uh, in Krakow, Poland. So we're coming back to Poland. <laughs> and in this great company, I'm really honored to present our youngest uh, institution, I think, in this company. We have only six edition uh, this year in October. Uh, it started as a festival made by artists to, for artists. And uh, we are very focused on um, exchange of ideas, mixing up uh, experiences. Uh, we love to bring all of the artists all together for the time of the festival to meet each other, to um, experience, to find out uh, what kind of solution are there to, to experiment and uh, check. Um, yeah, and uh, new technologies in practice are very in focus. Um, art, intersection of art in the new technologies and creative computing, this is in the scope of the... Uh, as the time is very short, I will start maybe from showing it um, um, after movie from last year. It will show the most what it's all about. The festival consists of um, exhibition, workshops, um, international conference, um, organized in, the, in cooperation with uh, Academy of Fine Arts in Krakow, um, meetings, presentations, um, live acts, and uh, audiovisual performances. And in the end, uh, DJ BJ sets like a culmination of the festival and an easy space for meeting. This is the last year edition which was dedicated to uh, virtual art, VR, uh, sorry, <laughs> virtual reality. Uh, VR, every year we uh, present or we focus on different topic. This year, in October, in October 24-29, um, we will focus on data art and uh, AI, AI, sorry, artificial intelligence. Yeah, Tale of Tales last year was uh, presenting their uh, new project, Cathedral in the Clouds. We had um, four installations in VR, and what was important for us to uh, find out what artists can do in VR. Because VR is mainly, uh, these days, it's very popular, very hot topic, but uh, Usually it's dedicated to games, as a space for gaming, for um, education, medi medical um, help, or um, making uh, work easier. But uh, we found out that this is also a very interesting uh, area for art and for creativity. So it was, I have to admit that it was not easy to find a good project, art projects uh, in VR, with a good quality and uh, artistic uh, approach. I just made it. <laughs> okay, I will go further. Ooh, really not too much time. 
So yeah, just to shortly uh, some glimpse on the works that we presented um, last year, the year before 2015, we had a Meha mechanic discursive Santi Vijay from Belgium, audiovisual performance, AV nights. Yeah, beautiful um, project, but Adrian, I'm. Hakanai, uh, Adrian and Claire B. That was uh, pre that we presented last year. I forgot to mention about this special project, also uh, with a special part of the festival pro program that uh, we put uh, or we present a project um, which combines new arts or new technologies with uh, stage art, performing arts. So it's like a symbiosis of uh, different disciplines. Uh, media labs, workshops, of course, presentations, that's what I mentioned. And this year, 24, 29th of October, we will have uh, 14 installations, six performances, uh, three workshops, meetings, presentations, and screenings. Uh, quite big addition because uh, since third edition, we, we will have, uh, we, d we are struggling with a place, with a space for an exhibition to keep it, uh, to keep a lot of works. This year, we will have. Um, 13 installations, so quite a nice amount of, of uh, works on the exhibition. And uh, yeah, on the right side you can see some of the artists which we will present and uh, I think it's it exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much and uh, I'm here if you have any questions. And of course, uh, see you in Krakow, 24-29 October. I just forgot to mention an important thing that uh, this is a festival member of the AVNOT network, um, which, is, uh, which consists of 35 partners, but yeah, you will find it on the webpage. Thank you.